Hello everybody. Sorry, it's been a couple of days since I recorded a podcast. Um, I wasn't going to do one today. I was feeling a bit low. Um, a few things had gone wrong. And um, I thought, well, actually, should I should I do a podcast? Because um, I'd really like to be transparent if I can and be as positive as I can. Um and I'm just trying to think why I was so upset by what had just happened. And um, <clears throat> I think maybe others will know the feeling. Um, you know, when you try and do something and you, you you have no idea that it's upset somebody or it's... And someone thinks that you're a bad person and that you've done something wrong and then you... You sort of unpick it and you go, well, no, it's just a misunderstanding and I'm really sorry you're upset. But they've still invaded your day and vented and all their negative energy has had to be processed. And you come away from it just tired and sad and I'm sure they don't feel any better either. Why do people? Why are people like this? Why why can't we just be nice? Just, you know, like when that lady reversed into me the other day, I didn't shout at her. I didn't make her feel worse than she already did. I empathised with her and thought, I know what it feels like when you make a mistake and everyone's watching and you feel you feel foolish. So I didn't I didn't bite. Um I think it's the bearded collie in me. Um, I had a lovely dog called Cleo that even when um, (laughs) other dogs bit her, she just refused to um, retaliate. I remember there was a a little poodle that really took a great, great dislike to her and was still attached to her nose at the time. And it was a tiny little dog, so its feet weren't touching the ground, but it was still holding on to the big black nose of Cleo. Um, And Cleo was just wagging her tail and looking up, saying, could you take this off my nose? (laughs) I aspire to be like Cleo, even when bitten and when provoked, to try and always try and be friendly and try and be reasonable. Yeah, we all make mistakes. Anyway, I'll stop being such a miserable old git and uh, feeling sorry for myself but I don't know I, I, I you know just when somebody tells you of something you didn't do or certainly didn't intentionally do um and assumes you don't know what you're doing on something where you actually you do know what you're doing and you're yeah mm, it undermines so many things um and it made made me unhappy in other ways because i was trying to do something positive about something that you know it's a tricky time at the moment and there's lots of things going on that i can't talk about and i thought i'd done something good and then someone just made me feel sort of flat again uh, you know like oh you don't know what you're doing <laughs> oh dear I try and be the person that knows what they're doing and has good ideas. But um, I then have doubt that maybe I don't have good ideas. Maybe this podcast's a mistake and that nobody's listening. And if they are listening, I'm just being boring and self-indulgent and reading you a story you don't want to hear. (sighs) So... Having said that, I'm feeling very sorry for myself. I'm going to read (laughs) another... I'm sniffling now. I'm going to read another chapter of The Devil Wears Dog Hair and give myself talking to. It's a good job this isn't video. Right. I think this is chapter nine or eight. I just don't know anymore. Crossing Lord Ronamir. To be honest, I hadn't applied for many jobs, but as soon as I soon knew there was something very odd about applying to be Dogs Today launch editor. 
They sent me a pilot edition of the magazine to critique, an actual properly printed edition of a title that didn't yet exist. The format was strange, a cross between a magazine and a tabloid newspaper. The covering letter explained that it was a magloid. I so wanted to love it, but with every page I hated it more. There was just no collective point to it. And much of it was in quite dubious taste. There was a news story about, I I mentioned a poodle earlier, a poodle falling out of a window and killing both itself and two pedestrians. There were many references to pooches to one of my pet hates. Apart from splashes of red, it was all black and white. With a heavy heart, I posted off my stinging critique, imagining I was probably going to cause someone great offence. I did suggest the changes I would make. It wasn't totally negative, but I certainly didn't mince my words. It was a real dog's dinner of a magazine. I took the Magloid into work the next day, and the British telecom boys thought it looked very professional. My confidence started to wobble. Had I been too arrogant? It was too late. I'd already sent sent off my savage attack. I was therefore very surprised when I was called for an interview. I presumed, like at the Kennel Gazette, where Ozzy Bryan was the only one to turn up, that I had been the only applicant. But the pilot magazine had been so bad... I thought I'd prefer to keep writing about boring old old telephones if I couldn't change it completely. When I got off the train at Windsor, I just fell in love with the place. The dog-friendly Sheet Street offices were very close to the castle, and I could imagine taking Sally along the famous long walk in the lunch break. I was shown to the waiting room and there was another applicant just leaving and another extra early who was being seen after me. I noted with surprise that I wasn't the only one to apply. These other candidates were older than me. I was the same age as as Michelle, the secretary, who had shown me in. She was very warm and friendly. I tried to strike up a conversation with the somewhat snooty lady who was very early. She enjoyed telling me that she was already the editor of quite a famous magazine. I looked on the wall and saw the other magazines published by Burlington Publishing. The Field and Shooting Times, two of the snobbiest magazines on the newsstand. The lady I had had just met would fit right in. But this young Liverpudlian was starting to feel very out of her comfort zone. I was sure the posh, successful editor woman had been very nice about their pilot. I was starting to kick myself. John Fletcher, the publisher, smiled when he said he'd been very interested in my critique of the pilot edition. He was very quick to point out that he personally had had nothing to do with its production. Would you like to see the other mock-up? He handed me a very heavy, glossy dogs today with a picture of the Queen and a corgi on the cover. I had a flick through, but there were hardly any words, just photos of posh people and their dogs. I see what you mean. This is even worse, I said. John smiled slightly nervously. The editor of the Evening Standard did that one. I'm going to stop there because I'm going to run out of story to read you soon because um, I have only written three more pages of this story. Um, I've got it all planned out in my head, but I wasn't sure you wanted to hear it. So if um, if you want me to keep telling this story, because I suppose we're getting on to the good bit soon. There is a good bit, promise you. (laughs) Um... Yeah, I wonder where the rest of the story is, because I thought I had written more than three pages. Hmm, I've probably misfiled it somewhere. Anyway, I'm off to go and have a cup of tea and probably a whole packet of Jaffa cakes. It's been that sort of day. I'm cheering up a bit now. Can you hear my my voice is slightly less 
flat than it was. When with my um, FND, my functional neurological disorder, when I get tired and stressed, bits start malfunctioning. And one of the malfunctions I get is I get I get a um, oh, I have trouble remembering my words. <laughs> I also get um, a numbness in my mouth that makes my tongue feel like it's too big. And I tend to start talking more quietly. And if I go the full on, absolutely everything crashes, um, my voice becomes nasal um, and people assume I'm deaf. But that has to be, that's like, you know, as bad as it gets so far. Um, I haven't had anything I have gone a bit further than that. There's other things that have happened as well. But I try and fend it off now that I understand. And I try and cheer myself up. So I'm off to find some Jaffa cakes. Anyway, let me know if you want me to keep going. Let me know if you want me to read some, write some more so I can read the story and tell you how I came to be the proprietor of Dogs Today magazine. It is a good bit of the story. Um, It was sad and then it was not sad. And I'm hoping that, um, you know, everything has its ups and downs, doesn't it? And the down that we're in at the moment will be coming up and um, onward and upward and all that sort of stuff. (laughs) Let me look at some more motivational posters. Right. Anyway, I'm off now. Do have a think of things that you would like topical issues you'd like to discuss um, when I learn how to do phone-ins and interviews people you'd like me to talk to Um, yeah I'm kind of hoping that this turns into a video Um, still got to learn how to do it but I you know I'm optimistic I am nothing if not optimistic I am a glass not just half full, but yeah, ready, ready to um, get a topper free of charge. But I think that's actually at just at um, really bad chain restaurants, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm off. I'm burbling. See you next time.